good morning everyone so today we are going to start a new chapter planar graphs let us consider the following problem the problem says that there are three houses and three utilities can you think of joining them such that none of the connections cross because if they crosses then it creates a problem if let's say the electric wire crosses with the one pipeline having water then there may come some issues so the question is is it possible to make connection in such a way that none of them crosses if you simply represent houses and utilities by vertex then the problem get transformed as follows that can you draw this graph k33 in the plane such that none of the two edges cross each other please do try it by yourself and then we will discuss it answer at the end of this class so planar graphs we say that a graph is planar if you can draw it in the plane without edge crossing we know that two edges for example if i draw this graph then two edges can meet at end points but other than the end points if they are touching each other we call it crossing so crossing of edges is the intersection of the lines or arcs or edges at a point other than their common end point such a drawing is called a planar embedding of the graph let's consider a very simple example what do you think the graph is planar so again planar means if you manage to draw this graph without edge crossing so which is quite simple you can draw it with one edge like this and the other edge can be taken from outside so this is a planar graph let's try one more example is the following graph planar again try to find a planar drawing see it is very easy to prove planar if there exists a planar drawing and you manage to draw it the difficult part is to show non planar because you cannot argue that we tried all possible drawings and none of them can be drawn without edge crossing that argument does not work mathematically so this one is planar and this is the planar drawing what about this one so now this graph is even its order is not very large but still it's very hard to check manually the graph is planar or not so that's why in this chapter we are going to see the necessary and sufficient conditions to check the planarity of a graph but yes this graph is planar and this is the planar embedding of the graph which we have just shown so as already discussed that we can prove a graph is planar by drawing it without edge crossing but not all graphs are planar and therefore it is very difficult to show non planar that is to show that there is no way to draw the graph without edge crossing a graph planar graph definition already discuss and if we draw it in the plane then we call it a planar embedding or we say it is embedded in the plane and this planar embedding is known as the plane graph so a planar graph that is drawn in the plane without edge crossing is a plane graph let's try a question so what do you think the following graph is planar or is the following graph a plane graph if it is planar can you draw its two plane drawing so the first thing is that the graph is planar because you can draw it without edge crossing but this is not a plane graph this is very important observation and now planar embedding are quite easy once you can take this edge outside in the other case you can take the remaining two edges outside and that's why these are the two planar embedding of the given graph the next concept is faces once we introduce the plane graph we can talk of the faces of a graph so a planar graph if drawn without edge crossing then it divides the plane into regions which we call as faces for example if this is k4 which you draw it like 
this one then it has the faces one two three and one the exterior one which is four so each face is bounded by a closed walk we call the boundary of the face so here the boundary of the face this triangle then this triangle and so on so the faces there is always one exterior face and all the remaining faces are the interior faces of the plane graph so this is an example where you can see that it has three faces r1 r2 and r3 the most important remark to remember is that the concept of faces is only defined for plane graph if i say you that how many faces this graph has then it is not defined first it should be a plane graph and then you can talk of the faces so if you see this example quickly try to compute the faces of this graph number of the faces for this graph so it comes out to be 5 and then if you see the boundary of the first face is simply a triangle but for the exterior face this is the boundary of the exterior face r5 moving further quickly try to questions try to compute the number of faces of the following graphs the first one we have already discussed how to draw its planar embedding and then you can quickly compute its faces so for the first one it's six and for the second one it's three so for the first one you can see that one two three four five and six and for the second one you can take the vertex upwards and it quickly you can observe that there are two interior face and one exterior face how many faces does a tree has so recall that tree is a connected graph with no cycles or connected simple graph with no cycles and therefore it has only one face so this is a another example where you can see the graph has four faces the next important and very powerful result is Euler formula which says that let G be a connected plane graph with P vertices, Q edges and R regions then this relation holds which says that P minus Q plus R is equal to 2. It means that if you have given a plane graph for which you can easily compute its vertices and edges then it's very easy to compute its regions by using the Euler formula. The next observation is that plane graph takes you to P minus Q plus R is equal to 2 which means that if the relation does not hold then you can say the graph is not planar. We will discuss it later on but first try to see its proof. So this is the example where you can see that it has 4 vertices so P is equal to 4, Q is equal to 6 and r is equal to 4 and therefore 8 minus 6 which is 2 the result holds now think that how you are going to prove the Euler formula we have already discussed it many times in the class that when numbers are involved one of the best approach is mathematical induction yes so let's start the mathematical induction before using the mathematical induction we again have to think that on which parameter we should use the mathematical induction in this proof we are going to use the mathematical induction on q but you can try to use on other parameters as well so if q is equal to 0 so if q is equal to 0 and the graph is connected it means p should be equal to 1 r should be equal to 1 and that gives you p minus q plus r which is 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so the result holds let's assume that the result holds for q is equal to k minus 1 and then we have to use show that the result holds for any graph with k edges remember a very common mistake when we do using the mathematical induction that we assume the result is true for any graph with k minus 1 edges 
and from there we try to move to the graph with k edges this is not true or this is not the correct approach because it is not possible to cover all possibilities while reaching from k minus 1 edges to k edges so the correct approach is that you assume any graph with k edges and you have to show that for this graph p minus q plus r is equal to 2 yes now think the other way around that if you have a graph g with k edges how can you go to a graph with k minus 1 edges the first question is you can simply say you delete an edge but which edge because sometimes by deleting the edge the graph may not be connected and if it is not connected you cannot use the induction and if this question is clear to you then you can break the problem into two cases one is if g is tree and if g is not tree so if it is tree then we know that it has p vertices which means it must have p minus 1 edges and it has only one region and that gives you p minus p minus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so the result holds now if g is not a tree then there must exist a cycle c so let e belongs to cycle c which belongs to graph g so if you think of g minus e then g minus e has p vertices because e is an edge and it belongs to a cycle it cannot be a cut edge and we are not deleting any vertex then it has k minus 1 edges and it has r minus 1 faces because whenever there is a graph which and there is an edge which belongs to a cycle either you delete this edge or you delete e2 if you delete e1 then the remaining graph has only one face 2 to 1 if you delete e2 then also the remaining graph has only one face it means if you delete the edge e then the number of the faces get reduced by one now g minus e has k minus 1 edges so i can use the induction it says that p minus k minus 1 plus r minus 1 should be equal to 2. If you simplify it, then it gives you p minus k plus r is equal to 2. That gives us the required result. So, Euler formula, very very interesting formula. We are going to see many questions based on this formula in the next class. Thank you.